I'll be showing 10 new features in Windows 11. The first new feature is the ability to share any window in Windows 11 directly into a Teams meeting. So I'm gonna open up Teams here and I'm gonna join a meeting. Click join. Now I'm here in this Teams meeting and I have a PowerPoint presentation, my next generation TPS report. I wanna share this window directly into the Teams meeting. All I do is hover over the open window, and if you're in a Teams meeting, you're gonna see the Share This Window button. Click this, and now choose Share. And I'll start my presentation here, and I'm gonna switch over to Alex, who's an attendee of this meeting, to show what it looks like on his side. Here's Alex, and you can see that the Next Generation TPS report is directly shared. Now, if I wanna share my OneNote window right here, I just go hover on OneNote, I choose Share This Window, and then I choose Share, and now the OneNote window is directly shared into that Teams meeting. This works for any window that you have in Windows 11. I could share my Explorer, I could share Camtasia, anything that you wanna share in Windows 11. If you're in a Teams meeting, share this window will pop up just like this. The second new feature is another Teams integration directly with Windows 11. I'm here in my Teams meeting and in the upper right, you can see that my microphone is open and I'm able to talk during a meeting. The new update is there's a big fat blue microphone here that is also showing for Teams. So I can just click this and it will mute my microphone up there. So maybe Teams was minimized or I'm doing something else and I just wanna quickly mute and unmute. Now I can use it right here, really fast, just like that. The third new feature is dark mode support in Notepad. So I'm gonna to open to the start menu and type Notepad. Now here's your friend Notepad. First up, I'm gonna make this dark mode. So in the upper right, there's a settings gear and now you can drop this down and choose dark. Also, if you have a system setting that is set to dark mode, Notepad will just follow it automatically. So for example, I'll use system setting here, and now I'm gonna switch my background and theme in Windows 11 to the dark mode. Let's check that out. So I've switched over my Windows theme to the darker mode, and you can see automatically Notepad switched as well. We'll hit the back button here. The fourth new feature is emoji support in Notepad. I've always wanted that. So I've planned out a LinkedIn post here, it's actually about my new nano tips course on how to learn office and short little tips. Look at this, I've got my little check boxes in color, I've got the little pointer, a little watch. So Notepad now supports emojis. It's a small one, but it's kind of nice. The fifth new feature is multi-level undo and redo in Notepad. So maybe I deleted a word here, and then I go delete this word here. If I do Control Z, the first one comes back. Control Z again, the second one comes back. And with Control Y, which is redo, I can redo. So there's multi-level undo and multi-level redo. The sixth new feature is improved find in Notepad. It's been updated quite a bit. So I'm gonna to go to the edit menu here and there's find, also control F. Click that and here's this new find dialog. I can expand this right here and there's replace options, replace, replace all. This option here, by default it's wrap around but you could also match the casing. So if I'm gonna to search a certain word here, Amazon, hit enter, it found one, I can go up or down, so I'm gonna search down. Here it's finding some other Amazons, I can go back up again like this. So some simple improvements to the Notepad find user interface. The seventh new feature is a dramatically improved emoji experience in Windows 11. So you can insert emojis anywhere, I've just got Word open here. If I do the Windows key and period, it pops up the emoji dialog. First off, you're gonna see my most recently used emojis or GIFs right here, or cow emojis. If I scroll up and I click on the emoji icon, now I have a library of all these emojis and you can see these have been updated to the 3D Fluent experience. So there's a lot of great new emojis you can experiment with. You can have the little categories here, people, celebrations, food. If I wanna make my avocado emoji, there we go, I'll click this. And now it inserts it right there. I'll hit the back button. We also now have GIFs. So if I go to GIF, I have lots of GIFs I can search for. I'm gonna search for my favorite, which is freaking excited. I'll click this here. I'm so freaking excited. There's that animated GIF. The eighth new feature is the weather widget has returned in Windows 11. So I'm going to enable the widgets option. So I'm gonna right click here, choose taskbar settings. And right here, we're gonna turn on widgets. Flip that to on. Now in the lower left, you're gonna see widgets and the weather widget is back. This has been a top request. So I can always glance at my weather widget over on the left. And I have all the other widgets here. Weather, you could have stocks and other things that you might have. 
This is the widgets that ship with Windows 11, but the weather widget right here has been the highly requested one. I could always go and change this too. I can make it small, medium, or large. I can customize the widget, or I can remove the widget. Maybe I wanna make it big, and now it expands out and I can see a little bit more data. The ninth new feature is Android app support on Windows 11. This is a preview and you start with the Microsoft Store to get going. So I'm gonna open the Start menu and type Store and Enter. Here's the Microsoft Store in Windows 11. I'm gonna to go to the top and I'm just gonna search for Android to find some Android apps. Here's a bunch of different apps. I'm gonna just launch a Kindle for Android to show what this looks like. So click here. And then you're gonna get this from the Amazon App Store. The way that Windows 11 has apps from Android is we're partnering with the Amazon App Store. So I'll click this, and this is a one-time setup. Use Kindle for Android on your PC. And it just says to get started, we need to set up virtualization, and I can just click Setup. This is a one-time thing. Okay, now it says enjoy apps from the Amazon App Store. And it explains that we're gonna install the App Store and you can get your favorite mobile apps and games on your PC and you do need an Amazon account to sign in. So I'll click next, and now I'll choose download. Okay, it's downloaded and ready to go. I'm gonna hit next, and then just restart your PC, and then you can run the Android apps. So I'll just do that really quick. Okay, I've rebooted, let's launch the store again. I'll go back to my Kindle for Android, click here, and choose get from Amazon App Store. Now that the subsystem has been installed, this dialog comes up. And I'm already an Amazon customer, so I'll sign in. Now I'm signed into the Amazon App Store preview. Here's the Kindle app, I'll just choose Get. It's downloading and installing, and I'll just click Open. Now I've got the Amazon Android Kindle right here in Windows 11. I could start reading or do a different account or whatever I want. So this is just one example of how you can now install Android apps on Windows 11. The 10th new feature is an updated and improved media player. For you old school window fans, we've taken the old groove music, we've given it a little bit of a facelift and some new features, and it's been rebranded as Windows Media Player. So now I'm gonna launch this here by opening the Start menu and typing Media. Here is the new Media Player. Now you can see that it matches system settings, which is dark mode. I can go to the lower left here and choose Settings, and you have a couple options to change the theme. Right here it sets a system setting. I could also choose Light or Dark, but we'll leave System Setting on by default. There's also accent color zest, or you could just say use the system setting. We'll leave it like this, and I'm gonna close settings now. For music library, you've got songs, albums, and artists. This is pretty standard that's existed. You've also got a video library, so I can have my videos right here. You have playlists, I haven't created any. But for those of you that have MP4s or MP3s locally on your machine, this is great to be able to manage your library. You can also go and change where these folders live. So for example, if I go into settings, I can choose the music library locations. I can add a folder. I open this by default. It just goes to your music folder. Same thing with video library locations. Open this and you can set it to different video locations. So there's nothing radically new here, but this is a modernized media player for those of you that have used and loved media player in the past. This is the update. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.